Good afternoon. It's Thursday afternoon, uh, January 26, 2017. This is the first of my what will be weekly uh, YouTube or video updates on what's going on at the legislature with emphasis on those bills which uh, the state bar has an interest. And so we'll start right out of the gate. House Bill 1053. Uh, that is an amendment to the existing Rural Lawyer Recruitment Program. It's a Chief Justice Bill. He's asked for our support. Uh, it simply uh, permits small communities that are, uh, that are within counties that exceed the 10,000 population limit under current statute to also participate in that program. Uh, Examples that I might use would be like Wall, South Dakota, no lawyers, 60 miles from uh, Rapid City, uh, Groton, which is roughly 35 miles uh, from Aberdeen. Uh, as I recall, there's just one lawyer, and I think he's every bit as old as me, if not older. Uh, maybe Faith. F few communities like that, simply making them eligible to request and participate in the program. Uh, that came out of uh, House Judiciary on a vote of 9 to 1, do pass. It passed the House yesterday afternoon, 46 to 21, and is now on its way over to the Senate for Senate consideration. Uh, House Bill 1080, that's the Uniform Access to Digital Assets Act. It's a uniform law. Uh, a group has brought that. We've been asked to support it. Uh, I have the appropriate State Bar Committee is taking a quick look at it. I don't think it's going to need a lot of help, uh, but as soon as they have their analysis done for us, I'll take it to the Board of Bar Commissioners and get their direction. Uh, House Bill 1081, uh, that is a State Bar Bill that came from the Natural Resources Committee. It was submitted to our membership in June and approved unanimously, and that's to tweak or refine the existing law which would allow severed minerals where you can't find the owner to uh, have any uh, lease payments and or royalties if under production uh, be placed in a trust uh, and held for the benefit of the uh, owner of those severed minerals until they can be found or if I th take a step back and think of general law if you can't find the owner after five years, then we've got the uh, unclaimed property statute where I suppose that the trust uh, would simply send uh, those monies over to the unclaimed property office. That bill has been scheduled for February 1st, so I guess we'll be right up. Uh, that'll be a judiciary committee, so that would mean it'd be on Wednesday next week. So, it will be heard then. Uh, House Bill 1083, that is a filing fee when you file your answer or uh, responsive pleading initial in circuit court only. Um, it's a $25 fee. Many, many states have it. Um, and the proceeds of that would be collected by the clerk of courts and remitted to the state treasurer who will hold it uh, for the Commission on Equal Access to Our Courts. <clears throat> 1083 also adopts about nine standards uh, for the Commission to consider as it awards the grants. Uh, they're all designed to go to assist legal services for the poor, our veterans, seniors, uh, disabled, and, and, and so forth. Uh, that too uh, uh, was submitted to our membership in June unanimously approved and so it's now uh, it's been assigned to House Judiciary I anticipate that it will be heard either next Friday uh, or the following uh, the following Monday that's my best guess it depends on uh, the uh, chair of House Judiciary which happens to be one of our good loyal members Mike Stevens uh, Next, and we don't, <clears throat> we don't have a position on it, House Bill 1108 is one of several bills attempting to deal with uh, interest rates on judgments, and particularly in 1108 is prejudgment interest. A quick review of that bill says that it ought to 
be 3%, or prime rate plus 3%. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how they figure when you have sometimes uh, a case may be uh, the incident giving rise to the cause of action may have happened three, four, five, six years ago, uh, and with prime fluctuating, I'm not sure how those calculations are made. Typically, that is uh, uh, that's an interest uh, or that a topic, I should say, that is uh, debated by the so-called trial lawyers on one side, your insurance industry, and and uh, defense bar on the on the other. Uh, I mention it only if you're interested in following it. Uh, historically, historically we we the state bar have not taken a position on that except if you go way back 10, 15 years ago, it was a radical change that would have screwed up all our uh, 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 interest rates as they pertain to matters in court and so forth, and at that point the commissioners had said go in and, and kill it or stop it or fix it or whatever. Uh, that's ancient history. Um, Senate Bill 72, that is the 2017 version of shared parenting. You may recall uh, if you followed these for a number of years, we've had shared parenting bills in the legislature. Uh, as drafted, we've always opposed. Sometimes we would tweak it. Uh, tweak our custody statutes uh, and then finally in 2014 we essentially the family law committee essentially uh, redrafted and, and proposed the Iowa statutes that facilitate but don't mandate uh, shared parenting uh, and the idea at the time was and then instead of using anecdotal evidence uh, uh, let's, you know, I don't know any way to call it, characterize it other than mad dad bills because it tends to be uh, a gender type uh, dispute. Um, we cut a deal and we said, let's do it, but instead of listening to the anecdotal uh, complaints of the mad dads versus the actual experience of clientele of our own members, I suggested uh, to the legislature, and it received, you know, very strong support. Enact it. Let's see what happens. Uh, I promised to go to the clerk of the Supreme Court, and every time a shared parenting uh, case was brought before it, I would obtain the findings of fact, conclusions of law, so we could understand what the trial bench is doing and distribute that to the members of both the House and Senate Judiciary. I haven't had to do that because they haven't had any cases since 2014 that have uh, hit the Supreme Court. Thus, my argument this morning, and it was heard in Senate Judiciary this morning, was that this bill is premature. Uh, we've been hunting for something that was more empirical than anecdotal, and that hasn't happened. There's only been one case that even addressed it on a peripheral basis, and the court simply declined to interpret that statute that we enacted in 2014 because neither party asked for it back at the time uh, that the custody was being litigated, which is one of the pre prerequisites. You don't change the entire system uh, and assume that everybody is into shared parenting, uh, and, and you jump through all those hoops, that's, you know, you don't operate a system that way. So one party needs to make the request, and if so, then, then that triggers the standards that we stole from Iowa. Uh, and so far, we haven't had, had any of those. Uh, nevertheless, that bill came out due pass uh, on a four to three vote uh, this morning from Senate Judiciary. There'll be a floor fight uh, next week. Uh, the Family Law Committee has, has said that, and correctly so, that, that the bill, as it's drafted, uh, while it gives lip service to the standards that are contained in 2014, it creates a presumption in favor of it, number one, and number two, it defines shared parenting as 50-50. Um, and I'm not sure how you short of a stopwatch and a calendar. I don't know how you how you do it, but nevertheless, that's the statute. The Family Law Committee said that's a bad bill. It subverts best interests of the children 
to the interest of the parents and only after determining that that doesn't work does the court apply uh, uh, the best interest of the children. The best interest of the children has been the standard since before statehood. When we were a territory in 1877 or whatever, um, I'm pretty close I think, um, we have had best interest of the children as the uh, controlling final arbiter of disputes between uh, parents. Uh, so there, we're, the fight continues again and uh, I'll keep you informed. Uh, Senate Bill 127 just got posted, adverse possession. Uh, adverse possession uh, occasionally rears its head. Uh, generally that's a local issue where somebody has a horror story. I paid taxes and my neighbor stole my property. I didn't know about it for 30 years or 40 years. Usually it's a fence. Sometimes uh, maybe it's something else. In any event, that just got dropped in. I haven't had a real property trust probate section look at that yet. Typically we lean in because, because even what could be described as a local problem with a parochial interest, unfortunately when they, when they go into adverse possession they impact the property laws for the entire state, the entire population. Uh, I would anticipate, but I don't know, that the, the section will recommend to your board of bar commissioners that uh, we oppose that or tweak it if it's save, saveable. Uh, finally, and, it's a, and, and again, uh, I, this is one that I don't, I don't know that we'd have any interest in, uh, but it's informational in case you want to follow it. Senate Bill 115 was just filed. Uh, that's a bill similar to the bathroom bill last year that was vetoed. This one talks about locker rooms and showers and, and restricts uh, access except for the exceptions are like janitorial services and stuff like that. Uh, if your birth certificate says you're a boy, you go to the boy's locker and if it says girl, you go to the girl's. So it's a transgender bill and, uh, uh, and uh, we didn't get involved in that last year. I don't imagine we're going to get involved in that this year. Uh, but it's one of information if, if, uh, if, it's, if that's an important issue to you. Uh, it just got dropped, it was just posted uh, this morning. And uh, this weekend I have, I have more time. Uh, legislature's coming home, they're returning to your community this afternoon. And uh, they won't start again until Tuesday. So I'm going to try to catch up. There'll be other bills, I'm sure, that as I read over the next four days, that may be of interest. Even though the state bar may not be taking a position on it, I'll try to keep you informed of at least those kinds of things that you might find important. I would have mentioned uh, initiated measure 22, but it's all over the TVs and the newspapers and everything, and I figure you already know. If you're interested in it, you already know what's going on. You have a good weekend. Stay warm. Uh, spring will come. Have a good one. Bye-bye.